of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. For this wonderful day that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we have gathered over here to spend with your word. Lord, we believe that it is everything of you being spoken to us and nothing of our own. You guide us, O Lord. You teach us. You reveal to us the word. You reveal to us the truth. We believe that it is because of your word. It is because of the truth. Today we have gathered over here, anointed by your word, to live a life in faith in you. We believe and we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. That it is because of your love and forgiveness you died for us on the cross. You took our punishment. You took our place for us on the cross. And now, because you took our place on the cross, today we are anointed with your word. We are anointed to keep our focus on you. We are anointed to keep our full attention on you and on the truth. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you for your love and for your forgiveness. We believe and we receive your word. We love you. We thank you for loving us. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, yesterday we were continuing to see more on the woman with the issue of blood. How she paid attention to the word. How she paid attention to the truth. Now, there is another person in the Bible who is in you know who, who who did the same things that the woman with the issue of blood did and even more and that is abraham he also had a promise i have been made the father of many nations he also had the imagination from childless to countless and now as he had this imagination because of his imagination it was brought to pass have you noticed that? You see, just like how the woman with the issue of blood received God's strength to go through that crowd, in the same way, this, uh, you know, Abraham also received God's strength to have a child at the age of 124. Because when he was 99, God gave him the promise. Now, after God gave him the promise, 25 years after, after then the child came, after 25 years, that means he was going, he was around 124. Now, imagine you're at such an age. It is impossible. It is impossible to get a child at this age. But this person got Okay, this person was able to, uh, the Abraham was able to get his manifestation because his imagination was in line with the word of God. Many a times in our life, we can also get the manifestation of God's word in our life only when, our, when we have the right imagination, we have the right focus only on the word. You see, many a times there are things around us that divert our Im imagination, that divert our focus. But we need to be very careful that we only focus on the word, nothing else. And now let's go back to that Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Praise the Lord. Okay, five verse twenty five onwards. You see that and a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years and had suffered many things or many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. For, and straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that place. Now, was she the only one who was touching Jesus at this time? No. You know why? Because 
the crowd was very big and the crowd is thronging them and he, they are falling on Jesus, they are touching Jesus, they are all trying to get the healing. But you see, whenever the, the crowd is touching, Jesus never, you know, G Jesus never felt that power gone out of him. No. But only when the woman touched, he felt the power going out of him. Why? Because the woman was the only one who touched with faith. And that's why she did not get her healing because she touched. No, she got the healing because of her faith. We receive our manifestation not because we do something, but because of our faith in Jesus Christ. We are doing something not to receive, but we are doing something by faith. Because Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the Bible says, without works, faith is dead. Faith without works is dead. So in other words, in other words, you need the scriptures. You need the truth. You need the promise of God. Only when you have the promise of God, you shall receive what God has already promised for you. You see, God has given us the promise, yes. God has given us the word. The question is, are we making this word the first priority? Or are we making what we see around us, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, our first priority? You see, that's the main question. Because what we have trained ourselves to do is trained ourselves to live by this world. But what we need to train ourselves to do is live according to Christ. You see, only when a person begins to believe by faith in the promise of God, only that's when he can receive what God has already given. <clears throat> if he does not yet begin to believe in the scriptures, he will not be able to see the result of the word working in his life. No. You see, the man, you see, many a times we pray, but nothing is happening. We speak the scriptures, but nothing is happening. You know why? Because not because we don't pray, we do pray, but because our faith is not there. Prayer doesn't make faith work. No, faith makes prayer work. If you're praying, if you're speaking the scriptures, but if you're praying without faith, it is of no use. Praise the Lord. A person can only live the life in healing, in deliverance, in what God has spoken by his faith. And that's what the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. The grace that was given to this woman, the grace that is given to us, sorry, the grace that is given to us is what? The healing power, the deliverance power, the blessing. And now it has already been done for us. But they also, you know, in the old covenant when Jesus was in this earth, you see the Bible says Jesus himself was grace. Let me show you the scripture. John 1 was 14. See this. And the word was made flesh. Who's the word? Jesus is the word. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So for the time, for the woman with the issue of blood, the grace was Jesus. She had to go to Jesus. The grace for us is we are no longer going to a physical human because we have Jesus in us. And as we have Jesus in us, the healing, the deliverance, the blessing power is already in us. Now, how do we activate it? By faith. Or by grace? Are you saved? Through faith. The grace for this woman is Jesus. The moment she put her faith in Jesus, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. That faith is what gave her the strength, gave her the confidence to come through the crowd, to touch the garment of Jesus, and to receive her healing. Let's go Okay, let's go back. Mark chapter 5.
See this verse 30. Now see what Jesus, how Jesus responds to this. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned to him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Now, this question for the disciples is not making sense. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and says thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about. So in other words, what the disciples are saying is, You see the whole crowd is falling on you, and you are saying, Who touched me? Really, Jesus? Really? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and says thou, who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. You know what this fear? This fear is not she's scared that Jesus might do something to her. No. This fear is the fear of God, the obedience. When he looked around, this woman obeyed, came down and told what happened. Now, when she is telling, when she came fell and fell down before him and told him the whole truth, when she is telling him the truth, what is she doing? You know what she is doing? Testifying. She is testifying. You know what is a testimony? Testimony is your gospel. Just like how Matthew wrote his own gospel, Mark wrote his on gospel, they wrote about how they believed in Jesus, how they were saved, what Jesus did for them, and what Jesus did to other people. Your testimony is your gospel. And your gospel is what God has done in your life and how he's working through you into others' life. That's a testimony. A testimony is your gospel. A testimony is your good news. What happened, what, what the good news is in your life, what Jesus has done for you. And you see, uh, here, Jesus is saying this to the woman with the issue of blood. He is listening to her. <clears throat> and he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made you whole. See, this is what it is. It was not because she came to Jesus, she got a healing. No, it was because of the faith. Jairus got his healing. His daughter got healed. Not because he called Jesus and Jesus healed, but because of his faith. Because if Jesus, if, if Jairus had not come to Jesus, then Jesus would have not gone and healed. But because Jairus came by faith to Jesus, believing even if, uh, he, he's saying, if I'm coming to Jesus, my job is definitely in the physical go, but in the spiritual, I believe I have a job. Now that I'm a ruler of the synagogue, now he comes to Jesus. And now Jesus goes. He comes with faith and they both go. You see, many people think Jesus healed them all. Jesus did heal them. But they were the first ones who made the decision to come by faith. The centurion. He was the first decision. He made the decision to come by faith. Only when you make a decision, when only when you spend time with the word, only when you spend time with the truth, only when you understand the gospel, you will be set free completely. I assure you of that. Because you see the word, the word works. The word of God is living, active, full of power. It is operative, energizing and effective. It works. But the word of God can only work in your life when you begin to believe in Jesus, accept him as your Lord, God and Savior, believe in him as your provider and receive what he has already given to you. Now see that verse 35. While he yet spoke, they came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, certain, which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble the, the master any further? So now while they're going to Jesus, the woman comes. She does everything. Jesus loves her. Now did Jesus, when he hears this news, did he say? <clears throat> now see that verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he says, you, because of your woman, Jairus' daughter, right? Because of you. Because you came and touched my garment and you stopped us. That's why. 
his daughter died. What did he say that? No. You know what he said? He said unto the ruler of the synagogue. Now this is the first word Jesus speaks to his Jairus. To Jairus. Be not afraid. Only believe. Because in other words, if Jairus is going to be fearful, he cannot experience the manifestation of God. If this uh, woman, if she was fearful of coming out that she might be stoned to death, she would not experience the manifestation of God. Fear is the block to every manifestation in your life. Fear. Fear is a block. You may think fear is a normal thing. Fear is not a normal thing. Fear is a block. It's a block to experiencing what God has already given to you. And he's saying, okay, he tells him, do not fear. When you are going through a problem, you have the decision, you have the choice, either to live by faith or by fear. Always and always and always and always make the decision to live by faith, not by fear. You know why? Because fear is what prevents you from experiencing what God has already given. Hallelujah. So, how can I believe in faith? You see why there is fear in our life? There is fear in our life because we have been trained to believe the physical evidence and not the spiritual evidence. But there is faith in our life when we make the decision to believe the spiritual evidence, the word of God, and not the physical evidence. That's when you can experience what God has already given to you. Because what God has already given to you is made available to you when you make a decision to walk by faith in the promise, receiving what he has already given, believing by faith in what he has spoken to you. So he's saying, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out, out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and says thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had done, what had what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy place. So this woman, when she testified, she testified not by fear, but she testified by the fear of God, in other words, faith, in obedience by faith. Because this woman is saying, I thank Jesus for what has happened in my life. Jesus is the one who is worthy of my praise, worthy of my glory, and I give it all to him. What are you saying in your life? Are you allowing Jesus to take control or are you taking control by your own strength? The moment you try to take control by your own strength, you will experience destruction. The moment you allow the word of God to take control of you, that's when God's word becomes the first priority. But there is one thing we need to understand above everything else. And that one thing is, in every area of my life, every minute of my life, I'm going to make a decision to focus on the word, believe in the word, and receive what God has already given to me. Praise the Lord. And he said unto her daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in the peace and be whole of thy place. So only when you understand the word, only when you understand the truth, the gospel, of Christ. That's when you will be able to see God's word working in your life. You see the truth, the word, the promise can only be experienced in our life when we make a decision to walk in faith in what God has spoken and not in the lies of Satan. Because it is the lies of Satan that brings destruction. It is the truth of Christ that brings healing, deliverance, and blessing. Praise God. 
So only when a person, only when a person begins to make a decision, just like the woman with the issue of blood, I don't care what is going on around me. I don't care the situations I'm going through. I don't care about the problem. What I care about is Jesus. I'm going to believe my, by faith and see what God has given to me. Only when you make the decision, you will be entitled to receive the truth working in your life. You see, there are people who are waiting for God to work, but they don't understand that God has already done. What they need to do is believe and receive by faith. We just don't understand that. Because you see, in every area of our life, many a times we are in a trap. The reason why we are in a trap because we have not yet understood who we are in Christ Jesus. Only when you make a decision to understand God's word, believe in God's word, receive what he has spoken, only when you make a decision to believe in the truth of Christ, you will receive what God has already given. Because what God has already given is, He has blessed you, He has anointed you, He has set you free. But you can only receive that freedom, that liberty of Christ, only when you make a decision to live by faith in the promise of God, not by your senses. If we want to experience true manifestation, if we want to experience true healing, true deliverance, true blessing, true pro prosperity, if we want to walk by faith and victory, the one thing, the most important, important thing that we need is understanding who we are in Christ, believing in the word, receiving what God has already given and walking by faith in what God has already given. Praise the Lord. So this woman, this woman understood the principle of faith. She applied the principle and she got the result. In the same way, when you understand the principle, when you apply the principle, you will also receive the same result. You know why we are prospering? You know why we are successful? The reason why we are prosper, prospering, the reason why we are successful is only when I make a decision to live by faith in the truth, walking by faith in the promise and receiving what God has given. Because it is by grace, through faith, I can receive what God has given. Now, Jesus understands what happens. And he says, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. That means she was healed financially, she was healed mentally, she was healed physically. She was healed in every area of her life, which she was not even aware of. And behold of thy plane. Go in peace. See, this peace which he's talking about can only be found in Jesus Christ. In other words, the peace that he's talking about can only be found in the word. Nowhere else. If a person does not make a decision to believe in the word, he cannot get that peace. Why? Because the peace of Christ, the word of God, the truth of God can work in a person's life only when you make a decision to live by faith in what God has already spoken to us. Thank you, Jesus. So, daughter, your faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Well, he yet spoke. Why he was speaking? Because see, when, whenever you are hearing the words of Jesus Christ or the words of God, the word of God, whenever you are hearing that, Satan will always come and attack you with something else, with a lie. And so while Jesus is saying this, a lie tries to attack. And you know what is the lie? The daughter is dead. But Jesus immediately says, do not be afraid. Only believe. Jesus was quick to say that in this area, if he attacks, we believe. If in that area attacks, Believe in the scripture. If we attach from that area, believe in the scripture. Why? Because Jesus was always, his foundation was based on God. Our foundation should be based on God. In other words, our foundation should be based on the word of God. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And when only when you begin to take a promise,
promise. Believe in the promise. Receive what God has spoken. That's when you can live your life in faith in the truth. Receiving what God has already given. <coughs> so did you understand any questions, any doubts? Okay, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, there is a testimony in the chat, okay, shared by Angelica. Now, I was not able to lift my arm, but my mom prayed over me, and I kept on saying that by the wounds of Jesus, I am healed. The pain left instantly. Praise God. Amazing testimony, Angelica. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. You know, when you see the word working, as you are studying today, because of the faith, the word works. But the word works. The word is alive. But it can only work when you first take the decision to believe by faith in that word. Praise God. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So today we pray for all those people who who get sick very easily, who get cough, who get fever very easily. Because I remember I was that type of person who I would get sick, get cough very easily. So we pray for those people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, whoever is out there who's getting, who 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 is having sickness, pain, uh, coughing, sneezing. Lord, I command. I command the spirit of sneezing, coughing, getting fever easily. Get out right now in Jesus' name. I command you, come out. Come out right now. Come out of their life. Come out of their body in Jesus' name. I command complete healing in their body, that they are healed, there is no more cough, there is no more fever, but they are healed by the wounds of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, we believe and we receive that they are completely healed and restored and delivered and made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, we'll continue the Thanksgiving prayer. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for teaching us your word. We thank you for revealing to us your love and for your forgiveness. Lord, as today we have learned on how to live our life just like the woman with the issue of blood, believing by faith in the promise we have. Lord, we believe in the promise that you have given to us. Because, Lord, whenever your word has said something, whenever you have said something to us, you are faithful to finish it. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we believe, we receive your word, we glorify you for who you are and what you're doing in our life. We thank you and we praise you, Father, in the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, we'll pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 